Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series, Jesus Gives Group Truth, on the subject of Will to Love in Action, filmed on the 28th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Okay, and um, it's already something like 20 to 4 or something like that, so I've only got a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is give you all some personal truth. How many of you uh, took some of the, um, the books that have been printed? Just put up your hand, please. Thank you. You all, or most majority of you, engaged your will not to love. Can you see where that happened? Let's have a look at if, so if you can feedback with me. So thanks, Sandra. I didn't even ask if I'm allowed to or can do it. No, they're out the back. That's fine. Yeah. We assumed that you would want to take them. I'll pay for it. Um, well, that's that, another one. That's weird. Well, we haven't even checked what's in the donation books, but obviously a lot of people take without giving anything. And you notice that uh, the person, Raj, who does them, said that he was already short. Of he's already spent more money producing them than he than he has getting receiving donations. So that's an interesting thing. Yes, many of us take without any desire to give back at all. So that is an issue. But that's it's not the only thing. There's something that all of you did. So some of you did donate, right? This is something that all of you did, or do, almost all of you did. Can you remember what you did, <laughs> Marco? I didn't actually take anything. I just, because I'm listening to the information here, thought after the session's finished, if there's anything available, then. Yeah, but I asked those who had taken something to be involved in this discussion. Okay. okay. Thanks, Rita. I, I ask myself, do I really need it or do I take it without needing it? Right, well, that's okay. We're happy to, for you to take uh, whatever you think you need and then distribute that to someone else. But my suggestion is, again, that, yeah, if the loving thing to do would be to take what you need or what you think you're going to need and leave the rest for other people to take, I agree. But that's not what all of you did. There's something else that all of you did, or pretty much all of you did. It's interesting. Can't even know, you don't even remember what it was. Thanks, Miranda. Like, take uh, all, one of each. Yeah, well, that's yeah. We expect okay. that that's probably going to happen. People will take one of each. Yeah, uh, that's pretty normal. Nice. And uh, I'd I question whether you need every one of them, but that's up to you. You know, this is a gift that's been given to you, but it's not what you did. That all of you did. If we come down, it's Le Lani. Yeah. Um, we took them in the five-minute toilet break. You did. But that's, when else are you going to do it? I don't know. When else are you going to do it? <laughs> But Mary said you could do it any time. Yeah. Um, if we go, Glenn's. Um, I noticed um, the plastic bags were sort of strewn everywhere and a bit ah, untidy. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Lena came up and uh, every cleaned, one of these things come in a plastic bag. <laughs> you had to take them out of the plastic bag in order to have them, and in the end, you left plastic bags strewn everywhere. And you know what the last group did? Every single plastic bag that was already that was there. That all the things come in, they neatly folded them up and put them in one place under something. But none of you considered doing that. You just left all the plastic bags there, which meant that someone else had to come along and do that for you. Huh? And you didn't even think about it, did you? Didn't even consider it. And this is what we do, you see. There are so many things, even in the course of a little... It's just that, it's a little thing. You think that's a little thing, but it's an act of love. See, a person who naturally loved would have done that. So this tells you you don't naturally love. You're so interested in getting what you want out of the interaction that you're not thinking about what you can give back to the interaction. Does that make sense? So Mary just had a wonderful talk with you about developing your will to love 
And yet, for, for a fair majority of us there, we didn't develop our will to love. In fact, in fact, we were completely ignorant of the fact that we were even being unloving. Can you see that? So, are you going to start judging yourself now? No. Because what did we say in the first part of the day? We want to measure ourselves and measure how we use our will. That's one of the three things we learnt, wasn't it, today? Three things. Remember, it was how we use our time, how we respond, how much resistance we have to truth and how we use our will. That were the three things. There's an example. Will not being used in harmony with love. That's an example. So measure it. Clock it. Feel it. What was your motivation? What was your decision? Did you even think about it while you were doing it? Measure it and see where you're at. Don't judge it. Measure it. Now, Mary gave a wonderful talk, I thought, about developing the will muscle, the, the will, and comparing that with willpower. So don't you next time go and use your willpower to fix that problem, which is what you would normally do, right? You'd go, oh, yeah, AJ notices all these things. And it wasn't me who noticed it, to be honest. Somebody just told me about it. But you go, AJ noticed all those things. We're going to get told off about that if we don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What's that? That's avoiding an emotional response, which is what willpower is, isn't it? So don't do that. What we need to do here instead is go, OK, why didn't I think about that? Why didn't I feel about what, you know, the fact that there was paper, there was these plastic bags strewn all over the place and it was becoming more and more untidy and you had to push away the plastic bags to get to the next layer of books. Like, why didn't I think about that? What, what was happening inside of me that caused me not to think about that? There's got to be something, right? Allow yourself to find it. Allow yourself to find it. Can you feel the judgment? Yeah, and it's just, you're just wanting to go back to this judgment place. You're not going to measure yourself very accurately if you keep going back to this judgment place. You're not going to be able to do it. You see, for most of us, there's so many things that are wrong. There's so many things that are out of harmony with love inside of us that if we judge every one of them before we feel any of them, honestly, next 20 years you'll still be judging and you'll get nowhere. It's time you give up this judgment, give up all this fear you have about oh, making mistakes and all that kind of stuff. Just acknowledge the mistakes. Say, right, there's a soul-based thing that's telling me there's something wrong with the way that I engage my will here. It's out of harmony with love. There's something telling me here. Find the reason why it happened inside of yourself. You know, we often say to people, and well, Mary's often coined the term, I think, sweat the small stuff. But just a little thing like that tells you a lot about a group of people, actually. Yeah? So it's interesting, isn't it, that last week the entire group did that. Like folded up the thing and put it all neatly away and all those kind of things. And it's interesting that n nobody in this group thought of doing that. That's an interesting thing, don't you think? Isn't that amazing? And this also shows us a little bit about how we go along with the, you know, the cattle. <laughs> you know, somebody does it, leaves it there, so what do we do? We go, somebody else has left it there, just leave it there. And then another person comes along and they go, oh, two people have left it there, so well, leave it there. And then another person comes along and says, oh, there really needs to be somewhere where this needs to go. But it hasn't, it's not me that has to work that out. Somebody else should do that, so I'll leave that there too. There's all these motivations going on that cause us to not think. Right? And in the process of not thinking, we're not reflecting upon what is the way in which we're using our will at all. We're actually, we've demonstrated we use our will to just go along with whatever unloving things other people do. Isn't it? Right? So that's a very good illustration, I feel, of how we use our will. Just a very little thing. Something that we could have just overlooked completely and just said, oh, well, that's what people are like. Right? You know, you get a group of crowd together and they always want to take things but never want to give anything back or they always want to take things and leave a mess around or whatever. We could have overlooked all of that 
And you can choose in your daily life to overlook every time you do this. But if you choose to overlook every time you do it, you won't love. You won't be loving. You won't ever become at one with God. You won't ever be, be even a loving individual if you overlook these things. And also just note that, the, that it wasn't automatic. It wasn't an automatic feeling. And it wasn't automatically acted upon if there was a feeling. So this is an indication, do you see? That if it's not automatic, then it means your will is already out of harmony. Right? If it was, you would have automatically done these things without being told, without having to think about it, without having, because that's what will would dictate. It would be an automatic process. Does that make sense? Yeah? No? Ooh, resistance to truth going on, guys. There's a lot of resistance to truth going on. How, how are you going to cope with the next seven days if you're this resistive to truth? It's going to be a struggle. Right. And we, we don't want to beat you over the head with truth. If, to be honest, my feelings are if you're going to be this resistive to truth collectively, I don't know if I want to do the next seven days with you. Remember, this is the gift of my time. So if you're going to be this resistive to truth collectively, I'll just pick out the ones that I feel are not and get all of you to go home. Or stay here, go somewhere else. I don't, it doesn't matter. I want to talk with a group of people who are not resistive. So can you just consider what I've said to you about love and can you also consider why it is you get up in arms immediately, go into that justification place and start rejecting what is being said? Because if you keep doing that, you're not going to benefit much from this entire week. There's a lot of things we want to share with you. Yeah. We've, only, we've only just got started. How are you feeling? See, see, a lot of you have just reverted to getting told off. That's all you've reverted to. Just the feeling of resistance towards getting told off. Right, that's, not, that's not the purpose of me raising this issue. The purpose of me raising this issue is to illustrate to you how you just overlook issues of love. And I think it's a great example of how that happens. Right? You don't need to be resistive, I don't feel. You just need to be honest. Yeah. And like, why are you resistive? What's the reasons? What are your reasons? You tell me. Let's have a little bit of engagement for two minutes and work out what your reasons are. Like, those of you who feel the way you're feeling. What are you? What are your reasons? Be, let's be honest. No, nobody wants to be honest. I think this, if we can. Carol. How are you, Carol? Uh, I've got a fear that I can't change, change the problem. Yeah, it's total rubbish, Carol. Sorry. Honestly, any single person on this planet is capable of changing the world if you choose love. So, so, so this is just you justifying an unloving act. Yes. That's all. Huh? Yeah. So, so what I would do there is I go, OK, I'm justifying an unloving act by saying I'm afraid. Now, how many of you do that in your daily lives? You choose to do an unloving thing because you're afraid. How many of you do that? Some of you, or most of you, right? Or you choose to avoid a loving thing because you're afraid. How many choose that? Right? So we need to be honest about this, yeah? So that's, that's valid, I feel. You're, you're choosing to say you're afraid rather than going, well, hang on a sec, if I really loved here, whether I'm afraid or not, I would choose to love. This, my will would be in that direction, right? So how am I going to get from feeling like I honour my fear to feeling like I'm going to honour truth in that situation? 
I would have to release my fear, wouldn't I? I'd have to actually go through the emotional experience of my fear, otherwise it won't be automatic. But to be honest with you, the stuff out the back, I don't think is very, a, a, a very, a, very much of a fearsome thing to do <laughs> compared to some other things. Yep. Anybody else? Or are you too afraid now because I said it was rubbish? <laughs> Come on. Yes, um, I noticed that the rubbish, uh, the bags were, you know, strewn all over the place. You did. But you I were didn't the... automatically pick them up and straighten them out and make them nice and tidy. Yeah. So. So, yeah. what were your feelings well, at the time? Uh, it wasn't an automatic. You noticed, yeah, which I noticed many didn't. It. Yeah, I noticed but it. it wasn't an automatic thing no, to no. tide it up. So I, what were you noticing? Yeah, I suppose I was just engaged in looking at the material and didn't really think about the most lovingest thing to do at that time. So could you say you were just self-absorbed? Probably, yes. Yeah, and this is one of our primary yeah. problems, yeah. is that one of the main reasons why we do not do loving things is because we're self-absorbed. We want everybody to love us. We want everybody to do loving things for us. But when it comes for us doing something loving to other people, and particularly when it's not noticed, when, it's, when nobody acknowledges it, we don't do it. Like if I live my life that way, none of you would be receiving any truth whatsoever. I, I do a whole heap of things that you have no idea what I do to share truth with you. No idea at all. You just get the results of it. You've got no idea how much work goes into it. By whole groups of people, volunteers even, you've got no idea how much work goes into it. No idea how much work goes into it from Lena and Igor's perspective, myself and Mary's perspective, whole teams of people who are volunteering their effort. No idea. No, why don't we have any dive? Because we're self-absorbed. That's a big problem, isn't it? Being self-absorbed. So there's, a, there's something that prevents us from using our will to love because we're too busy using our will to get whatever we want. So that's a good thing, good place to start, isn't it? Feel why we're that busy getting everything we want. That'd be a good thing to do. Yeah. Any other things that you think of as to why we do what we do? Huh? Rene? Hi. Um, I wanted to reject the truth because I want this facade that I just... I'm ashamed of anything wrong and I just want to be perfect. Yeah, honestly, Renee, I'm sorry, but I've got to disagree with you. That was so much of a facade comment that I, that I can't even properly acknowledge it. It's, um, you are so used to being untruthful with yourself. Just so used to being untruthful with yourself. And, and it's almost become a, an addiction in its own right to, to say a whole heap of things that you don't really feel or mean. Right? This is part of our problem too. That's where I would go if I was you. I'd go, I'd go, hang on a sec. Like I am so used to telling myself lies that I even start to believe my own lies now. That's how bad it is. Right? That's not the reason why many of us choose to, choose to not do a loving thing. Right? It's got, it's got, and fear isn't the reason why either. Right. Fear, fear is not a valid reason. When are you going to get that? It's never a valid reason to not love. Fear is not a valid reason ever to not love. It's an excuse we give ourselves, but it's not a reason. Right. It's not a reason. The reason is we lack, remember today, we lack faith. We don't want to be emotionally overwhelmed. We're just resistive to truth. We just want to, you know, do the unloving thing because that's what we feel we want, we need, we want it now. We've got to be honest with these things, huh? Okay. Okay. Well, um, Nat, do you want to just say before... I just wanted to ask, is not even noticing that the bags were like that, self-absorbed? Totally. Okay. Not even noticing that your environment is untidy? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That is, that is where, that is an, uh, not being loving to yourself or anybody else. Like, like, 
How, how many of you need someone else to tell you to tidy your own room still? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, that is an indication that you haven't learned about love of yourself yet. Yeah. You, you, like, you don't need and should not need anybody to tell you that your environment's untidy. And I was reflecting, because when I looked at it initially at the table, it wasn't yet messy. Yeah. But I was feeling about, had I noticed that, what would my response have been? And I could feel straight away that it's someone else's job. Of course. Someone else's job is a great excuse, right? You know, all of them were wrapped in plastic. You know, if a, a loving person, what they would have done? They would have gone through a whole lot of them and unwrapped them out of their plastic, probably. Or at least wrapped the first level of them out of their plastic. Right? But why don't we do that? Because we're, we're not automatically loving. That's why we don't do it. It was a great example. Thanks, AJ. Yeah. yeah. So what, what, I'm try, what I'm trying to do here is help you understand that automatic loving acts will occur when your soul's in that place. Right? If it's not automatic, then it, then it means that your soul's not in that place where it's automatic. Honour that. Be honest about that. Stop telling yourself it is when it's not. Right? And be okay with seeing that it's not. If you're not okay with seeing it, you're never going to be okay with changing it. You've got to at least see it before you can change it. And if you're not okay with seeing it, you're never going to change it. So, so you need to be okay with seeing it. Nick, you wanted to? It's coming around. And if we come down. <coughs> I, I think for me, and also for probably many people here, there's a sense of entitlement that we have to things. From I agree. We're very demanding. Yep. Um, you know what's happened to many people who are hearing Divine Truth? Is they think that because we give it away for free all the time, that it means that they can just keep taking, taking, taking without any, without any thought to the process about their loving behaviour or unloving behaviour. And this is a trouble with receiving gifts, you see. When you receive gifts, over and over again, sooner or later you start treating them as if they're not gifts. Now, that's an issue of love, isn't it? Because every time a gift is given, it is a gift. Yeah, and a loving person would know the gift that's being given. So that's a big issue too. Yeah, look at that. That's a very good thing. And, and possibly for me, like filling into that is this sense of entitlement that comes from having a mother that would constantly give and give and give. And as a child, just yep. taking, taking, taking. For some of you, it's that. For others of you, you are in so much personal lack yourself that you think that anybody who has more than you should give to you. That's a big issue. Right? So it just, there are different emotions, I'm saying, that drive that entitlement feeling. The feeling of deprivation. Yeah, I, I, I know that one. Um, I actually did look at the books inside the plastic and thought... They ought to be taken out and be put on top. Mm -hmm. But I think I've got a really distorted understanding of what love is because I thought that was... Can I just stop you for a moment? Not the loving thing to do. Yeah, like, you know what? Uh, you know what? I find a lot of you using this as an excuse. Okay. You go, I thought about doing the loving thing, but I don't know what love is. Okay, hang on a sec. You thought about doing the loving thing, so something crossed your mind at least. Well, I don't know. I wasn't thinking I was... I thought about the loving thing. I thought about taking them out. I didn't know. Which is the loving thing. Right, well, I thought I was being unloving by doing that Why? because they won't be protected. No, but if you leave some of them out and yeah. some of them in, then some of them would be protected, even if you took the yeah. first one out for the next person and they had all the others in. That would still be most of them protected. Okay. Uh, like I don't see the issue. See, see, I feel what the issue is, is that many of us have a prompting of what the loving thing is. And in fact, many of your guides are doing to you, this to you every day. They prompt you. The loving thing to do here would be to do this. Or the loving thing to do here would be to do that. Now, bearing in mind that that is where, uh, an area that myself and Mary and, and Lena and Igor are looking after, you could just say, look, why don't uh, you go up to somebody who's looking after it and you say, look, can, we, can I take all these out for you? Or can I take some of them out for you? You would have asked, right? But we don't, because we automatically make the presumption, right, that something's either wrong with us or something's, something's... We don't go further. We don't take 
the further step of finding out. Isn't that true? For the majority of us, isn't that true? We, we don't take the further step. We either presume and go and do something or, or we're too afraid to presume and go and do something because we might get punished. But both of those things are often unlo unloving. Yeah, Mary? Uh, I just thought to add that Raj, who actually created those booklets, he was willing to engage his will muscle uh, with the risk of being, having overwhelming stimuli in that he just said, look, I think booklets would be a great thing. Do you guys care if I do that? And we went, no, we could have said, no, that's a terrible idea, Raj, how unloving, you know. But he was willing to engage with an opportunity to love. To love you. To love you guys, it wasn't us. People he doesn't, never met. And he thought, I think this would be a great way for people to hear about divine truth. So I'm going to engage with this opportunity and, and see had, what he's happens. He's had to do lots of things to do it. He, he, he had to, there's this copier that he had to engage in a process where he initially paid for people to do all the copying and everything. And eventually this guy gave him a copier to do it. Because he engaged his will in love right from the beginning, somebody finished up giving him a copier, a colour copier that does 60 pages a minute or whatever it is. Right, an old one that came out of some place and they gave him the copier to do it even. And he still does it and he's never received a penny. He, every single donation that he's ever received have gone back into printing another book. He's personally never received a donation that actually pays for his time to do it, ever. Right? And we could go, oh yeah, that's his law of attraction, though, you know. <laughs> No, it's the fact that we, the people who use the books, don't really appreciate what's gone into it. That's what it is. And we need to be honest about it. Yeah, and, and second to that, um, if we're going to engage this will that we have, but we're only ever going to engage it when we are sure everything we're going to do is going to be loving, we're going to get validation that it's loving immediately, then we don't really have a sincere desire to learn about what love is. You remember to grow in what love. Mary and Corny had to do? That's what we'd be doing. We're waiting for somebody else to lift it all for us. Go, oh, yeah, that's loving. Oh, okay, now I'll do it. Yeah, that's loving. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, that's loving. I'll do that. But that's not engaging your will. It's not feeling inside of yourself. I want to do this thing because I want to learn about what love is. Many, I want to know. Many of us want a list from God, you know? Yep. Isn't that right? If we're do, honest with ourselves, don't this do. is the do <laughs> list, that's the don't list. You do these things, I'll reward you. You do those things, I'll punish you. What? Hang on a sec, that sounds like a religion. <laughs> Isn't it? It is the religion that was created. The, the do list of what God would do, what God should do, with rewarding us or punishing us for what we choose to do. We don't need that because we're going to develop our will in harmony with love. We won't need someone checking on us. We won't need someone motivating us. We will not need someone doing it for us because we're going to be loving. God has better faith in us than that. Yeah. He, do, he knows he doesn't need to do a list. He knows that if we engage our soul, wow, we're going we're gonna to learn so much and he won't have to issue second edition lists. Third edition, now you've got nuclear weapons, here's a seventh edition, you know, don't do that one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, we leave that with you. Sound all right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, dinner time, actually, I think. I think close to. I think it's pretty close. Yeah. 4, 4 p.m. dinner, so we... So what is the time? Quarter. Quarter two, so you have a few minutes left. So um, we hope that you've in, engaged today and enjoyed today. We hope that we're starting to challenge you a little bit in terms of trying to help you see what needs to be done if you really want to become a loving individual yourself. And tomorrow what we're going to do is focus your attention now on you, yourself, because we feel that's what we need to do. We're not going to do it in a narcissistic, self-absorbed <laughs> manner. We're going to do it in a very honest and truthful manner, just so that you can come to understand yourself properly. Does that make sense? So our whole day tomorrow is focused on helping you understand yourself. Now, those of you who were involved in the Facing Personal Truth sessions that we planned, Ange, uh, where is Ange? Can Ange. I do you tomorrow sometime during the day? And the other Sandra. person was Sandra. Yeah. Yes, and if we can try and fit that in tomorrow, we'll see how we go. Okay. Now, this evening, there is nothing planned, aside from 7pm 
supper. So you've got a couple of hours to do some homework. Remember, you were left with three. I've got to put uh, up with, their homework. Was it two lots or three lots of homework? We've got to put some up. You will need to flick on the projector first. So. It'll take okay. a while to warm up. Yep. So just if you can remember your homework and reflect upon your homework, that would be fantastic. Sandra, if we can. Sorry, honey. Sorry. Sorry. I, Let me I just wanted, that. Sandra. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, are we allowed to take the bags? Because I took one and I'm feeling yep. like I've stolen it because I was like, <laughs> well, like I wanted to throw so you it took out. The books but I and took the bags. The books and I took the bag because and, I was like, well, I'm not going to leave it on the, yeah. on the table, but I'm not going to throw it out because I feel it needs so to be recycled. So you took the books and the bags and you didn't donate anything? <laughs> I stole anything. everything. Oh, no, I've donated earlier. I've talked to Rajat about it. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. um, and also, I wanted to address that in the toilets. It's twice that it's happened now that I go to the toilet and people don't want to replace toilet paper. It's another issue. Like yeah, yeah. they don't want to throw it out. They wait for another another person to come in and change the toilet roll. Yeah. And that's another issue that we women have in, yes, in the toilet. Yeah, we haven't had that problem in the men's toilet as far as I'm aware. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It's only the women. Yeah. <laughs> So there's obviously an issue there. Something I wanted to encourage you guys to do is like this is a whole eight days full of opportunities to grow this will muscle. But it's going to have to be driven by you. I can't give you that as homework. Go and do something loving. But obviously, you, there's a wealth of opportunities here and you're in an environment that you're not in control of as much as you usually are. So there's more opportunity for overwhelm. So, yeah, just an encouragement, opportunity. So